Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us for this morning's session. Uh, we're going to be talking about Azure Migration Best Practices. My name is Bill Kastner. I am a Solutions Architect with ProServe IT uh, with a, a focus around Azure. From an agenda perspective, uh, we're going to cover our introduction. Uh, we're going to talk through migration triggers, cost optimizations, common migration project, projects, migration planning, and next steps. When we talk to customers about potential uh, migration triggers, there are a number of things that often come to mind. Um, things like data center expiration um, or other um, you know, IT investments that potentially need to be made. You know, anywhere where we're looking at large capital investments, you know, can often be a great opportunity to explore the potential of Azure. Uh, organizations looking at facing challenges with business continuity or, or cash flow challenges or dealing with cybersecurity threats. Again, a great opportunity to explore whether Azure may possibly make sense. In organizations that need the ability to rapidly scale or expand infrastructure or deal with budget and resource constraints, can look at the value that Azure can bring to the, to the table. So how does Azure help address these? Uh, the first one is, is having the ability to flip from CapEx to OpEx and only worry about paying as you consume. So when we talk to, to organizations, you know, it's not uncommon for them to have challenges in trying to pre-predict what their infrastructure is going to look like or what their infrastructure needs is going to look like over the next three to five years. Um, so organizations typically need to look at large capital investments you know, to buy the infrastructure, you know, pre-identify what they think their loads are going to look like, and then adjust accordingly. The benefit of moving to a solution like Azure is because it's an OpEx model, there's no large capital expenditure involved, and we're no longer really focused on what our growth is going to look like. Um, you know, we're able to focus on our needs of today with the understanding that with a simple reboot, we can, we can easily bring that infrastructure up with additional resources. For organizations that struggle from a security perspective, Azure again adds great value. Um, so Microsoft has done a fantastic job of integrating a number of security integrated solutions into the Azure, uh, Azure portal, which can not only reduce the, the time required to deploy, but can also simplify overall management. As we're no longer typically worried about things like virtual machines and such to, to deploy virtual, or sorry, security related solutions, we're able to leverage Microsoft's Azure native technology to introduce a number of the security components and provide a much stronger security landscape for their organization with minimal investments in time and resources. And as mentioned, we have the ability to scale to what's needed. Um, and this is a really a critical component, I think, that a number of organizations see. And that, as I said, because we no longer need to worry about what our growth is going to look like in three years um, and, and you know, have the infrastructure to support that today. We just focus on the needs of today. Um, you know, with a simple reboot, you know, we can double our, our RAM or, or double our CPU cores. Um, and so if, if our growth projection matches what was anticipated, again, at a reboot, you know, we're, we're there and available. But if something shifts within the business, you know, if we had a pandemic, for example, or have an unexpected uh, surge of, of growth that we weren't able to anticipate, you know, again, being able to quickly uh, refresh the environment with additional resources or decrease you know, resources if that's the business need as well, gives organizations a ton of flexibility in how they actually manage their infrastructure requirements. One of the things that we work really strongly with our customers around is optimizing costs. And this is true both during the migration as well as post-migration. When dealing with the migration itself, um, you know, it's highly recommended that you look at the Azure, Azure TCO calculator to map out both your on-prem and Azure potential costs in order to make sure you have a clear understanding of what those costs are going to be on an ongoing basis and you can build an effective business case. Right-sizing resources is a critically important uh, component to Azure migration. You know, when we deal with, with organizations, in many, many instances, we see that infrastructure is often over-provisioned on-prem. Um, so typically IT organizations, you know, if they have the resources available, they will look to add additional CPU cores or additional memory to VMs because ultimately the objective is to try to ensure a positive end user experience. While this works on premise in Azure, because we're looking at permanent billing for every CPU core, every gig of memory, every gig of storage, we typically don't want to over provision more than necessary. And so walking through a right sizing exercise to ensure that while you still have headroom inside that VM, it's not dramatically over provisioned can have a significant impact on your overall Azure consumption costs. 
organizations who have software assurance on their on-prem licenses are able to take advantage of those licenses through Azure Hybrid Benefit to reduce their, their consumption costs. Typically, the permanent billing cost for a virtual machine in Azure does include Windows and SQL licensing. So if you already have those licenses available to you, organizations can save 30 to 40% on their VM costs just by leveraging those existing SA benefits. Azure reserved instances allow you to pre-commit for either one or three year terms. There was a point in the past where you needed to pay that all up front, but you now are able to still leverage monthly payments, um, but take advantage of that reserved instance, which again can have significant savings. Organizations able to leverage both hybrid use benefits and reserved instances can save anywhere from 70 to 80% of, of VM costs compared to what they would with standard pay as you go. When we look at post migration, uh, there are a number of components to, to consider as well. Um, so Azure Advisor is baked into the Azure portal and it provides insights into some cost considerations. It will identify workloads that might be able to be shut down due to you know, being idle. Uh, it will provide recommendations on virtual machines that they th it thinks are good candidates for reserved instances and can also provide recommendations around sizing if it identifies that uh, server workloads are significantly over provisioned. Azure policies allow us to actually define uh, criteria on how we want that infrastructure build to actually put limits in place to ensure that only supported or recommended VMs are being deployed and that we don't have you know, developers or, or other third party resources who might have the ability to spin up resources. Deploying really large scale environments that aren't absolutely necessary. And lastly, with Azure cost management, we're able to dig in deep into our monthly uh, consumption bills to get a better understanding of where our costs come from. It allows us to set budgets and allocate spending. Um, and again, allows us to dig in deep on a per resource basis to understand where our costs are coming from, as well as to be able to predict both what our uh, anticipated cost is through the month, as well as at your view month by month spending over time to understand how our growth has looked like in Azure. When we talk to organizations around uh, potential migration projects, especially those just first stepping into Azure, there are a number of candidates that, that immediately come to mind. Naturally, Windows and SQL servers, uh, you know, production workloads are, are great candidates to, to transition to Azure. You know, we see a number of organizations that, that look at low hanging fruit um, or, or simple server scenarios that again, can be easily ported into Azure um, that you know, we don't need to worry about a great deal of complexity around that. But these can, this can be a great way to free up resources on existing on-prem infrastructure, especially if you're reaching capacity. Other organizations we see look at more complex applications that might be resources intensive and might be uh, you know, bursting at the seams of that on-prem infrastructure. And so being able to offload those types of, of workloads into Azure can be great candidates as well. Along with Windows and Server, uh, sorry, Windows and SQL, we also have Linux and open source databases. So while Azure is obviously a Microsoft solution, there's also a broad range of support for third-party solutions such as Linux and, and various uh, SQL database types, like you know, MySQL and, and things of that nature. Organizations who have development or dev test requirements can take advantage of dev test labs inside of Azure, which allows you to build sandboxed environments where IT is able to put constraints into what can be built inside of that environment, but you then can give developers free reign within that sandbox to build and destroy virtual machines as needed and build out the infrastructure they need without having to pester IT continuously. Web apps, uh, specialized workloads, things like SAP or VMware NetApp or Oracle-based workloads can be great candidates as well, as well as VDI. So Microsoft has introduced uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, which is their VDI solution. It is a multi-session Windows 10 desktop experience. Um, it is an Azure only solution, uh, but it provides organizations with a lot of flexibility in how they manage remote workforces. Uh, and we've seen a great deal of uptake in this as organizations have struggled over the last year or so to support a, a much larger number of remote workers than most organizations ever initially planned for. Uh, for those organizations that don't want to rely on, on you know, point to site VPNs for end users who recognize that maybe you need to rely on personal machines for users versus corporate machines, you know, looking at a VDI solution like Windows Virtual Desktop can provide a secure, robust solution to provide a consistent end user experience without you having to worry about the endpoints so much. When we look at the migration journey, um, there's a couple things to keep in mind. 
Um, first and foremost, you know, the pre-migration planning component is really critical. Um, and, and this is something that I don't think necessarily gets the, the attention that it always deserves, but it's often critical to ensure a, a successful migration project. So being able to define your, your migration strategy, um, understanding you know, where it makes sense to involve a partner such as ProServe IT, um, and, and figuring out what you can do in-house versus what it makes sense to, to leverage you know, external expertise. Uh, having that, that knowledge up front can again help ensure a successful migration project as you have your, clear, your clearly laid out resource requirements. Um, walking through a proper planning exercise, so completing an assessment is the critical component to, to migration. Um, as mentioned in some of the previous slides, you know, many of our, our on-prem uh, virtual machines are often over-provisioned. Um, so being able to right-size that, being able to ensure our level of Azure readiness. Do our virtual machines, you know, do they comply with Azure requirements or are we going to need to do any remediation? You know, what are interdependencies and what are connections between these virtual machines? All these things are typically mapped out through that assessment process to allow organizations to build an effective migration strategy. That assessment also gives us our costing scenarios um, where we can actually build out different pricing scenarios inside of Azure. You know, whether we're looking at leveraging reserved instances or hybrid, Azure hybrid use benefits, um, or maybe dev test labs for non-production workloads. You know, mapping all of these things out is important in building out our business case so that as we present our solution to the business and, and predict what our costs are going to be in Azure, we can have a reasonable level of confidence in what those uh, consumption numbers are going to be. And then lastly, we want to build out our migration plan to, again, you know, ensure that we have a clear path forward. Typically, a transition to Azure is a multi-stage uh, process. It's not a single migration uh, hop. And so building out a migration plan, understanding what workloads make sense to move when is critical. As we get into the migration itself, uh, we typically try to encourage sort of a continuous cycle or continuous evolution. Uh, you know, you typically start with your adoption, so your workload migrations. Um, step into management where you're, you know, it's an operational process, managing that infrastructure as it's in Azure, uh, building out your governance or your security, security compliance requirements, and then ensuring that your technical resources have the skills necessary to actually support that. Well, some organizations do stop there once the infrastructure is in Azure. One of the key benefits of moving to Azure is that it opens up a ton of possibilities. You know, where today you might have an a, uh, infrastructure as a service or an IaaS environment, which is largely VM based, you know, one of the real benefits of moving to a solution like Azure is the ability to move to platform as a service. So maybe taking that SQL virtual machine that you know is is heavily utilized, uh, but maybe has some some peaks and valleys in utilization. Uh, you know, with a virtual machine, we're building for our peaks. So if we only have maybe a week out of the month where that that machine is really hammered hard, you know, we need to build for that. But that means three months or three weeks out of the month, that virtual machine is running at you know underutilized. By moving to things like platform as a service, we're no longer constrained or worried about uh, the virtual machine itself. We're paying for consumption based off of utilization at point in time. And this is, again, one of the reasons that we look at, at Azure as a continuously evolving journey, because we don't want to typically just drop our virtual machines in and, and leave. You know, we want to look at other opportunities to consolidate, to explore, to, to grow, to leverage things like platform as a service and start to expand our capabilities and hopefully reduce the overall burden in IT. There's some investments that organizations can make to help uh, lower migration costs um, and help you move forward with confidence, which is key. So Microsoft has done a really good job of, of what they've claimed are called their, their Cloud Adoption Framework or CAF. Um, so this is really a, a set of, of guidelines and recommendations on how to manage Azure. Uh, Microsoft has a wealth of published information available on their cloud adoption framework that take organizations through uh, through the initial discovery and assessment, asks some pointed questions to ensure their organizations have a good understanding as to what they're moving to Azure for, what they're hoping to get out of Azure, and how they're going to manage that. Having a framework in, in place early in your Azure journey can be hugely beneficial as it allows you to define things like access control and tagging and, and other things that are important to allow you to manage as you're moving forward. And not surprisingly, it's obviously much easier to, to have this framework in place early on, ideally before your first migration or at least early in your Azure lifecycle, because it's far easier to implement these types of policies 
on you know day one and have that become the norm versus trying to step back in 12 or 18 months later when Azure has been widely adopted and try to, to define some sort of rigor around that um, at that point in time. Microsoft has a number of programs, including the Azure Migration Program and Fast Track, that's designed to help organizations have access to the resources necessary, both technical resources as well as specialized partners who can help answer uh, pointed questions and maybe help get you over hurdle or help you understand how to address a caveat or consideration that, that is critical to a successful migration. And then lastly, Microsoft does, has done a really good job of uh, consolidating all of their migration tools into the Azure Migrate Suite. So a little bit deeper in Azure Migrate. So Azure Migrate is really a, an amalgamation of all of their various tools, things like Azure Site Recovery and, and DMA for, for SQL and such. All these tools that have typically been disparate and, and standalone products now roll nicely into the Azure Migrate application. This gives us a single pane of glass to allow us to manage our migrations end to end. Whether you're migrating Windows or, or Linux servers, databases, data, web applications, or virtual desktops, Azure Migrate is your one-stop shop to help manage that entire process. Um, it is designed to help manage through initial discovery, through those assessment scenarios that we spoke to, straight through the migrations themselves. And it will also not only work with Microsoft's free tool sets to help facilitate migrations, but also integrate with a number of the third party tools out there to help with specialized workloads or other scenarios where maybe the Microsoft tools are not the best candidates in place. But that being said, because a lot of these tools do integrate natively with, with Azure Migrate, it still allows us to, to provide that single pane of glass to manage our entire migration project from start to finish. One thing to keep in mind when, when planning an Azure migration is the understanding that you know, no migration is ever linear or simple. Um, you know, there's always going to be complexity. There's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be things that, that you didn't foresee or think through. It's the nature of the beast. Um, and this, again, is where I think there's value in, you know, while many organizations do have expertise or do have bandwidth available, you know, there is significant value in engaging a partner, even to help with some of the initial planning phases to help address some of these challenges. Um, you know, the overall migration, while it can sound relatively straightforward, there are a number of complexities involved, and it's important to ensure that it's a smooth and, and seamless transition for organizations as much as possible naturally. Um, and again, that's where a, a partner can help. But it, again, you know, even if you want to, to tackle this entirely on your own, it's important to, to leverage some of the Microsoft tool sets Take advantage of the expertise that they provide online. So again, things like assessments, things like the Azure Migrate tool set and their cloud adoption framework to ensure that you have a very solid foundation. So as you work your way through this, this journey, that you have a solid foundation to work from and that you have got a level of confidence in the process that you're going to undertake. So with that, um, for those organizations that do want to explore the, the idea of Azure a little bit further, um, that do maybe want some help in those initial step, in the initial step conducting an Azure assessment, ProServe IT does have an Azure assessment offering uh, that we'd be more than happy to talk to you about. Um, again, this will allow us to work through um, the, you know, the underlying uh, steps to ensure a successful migration from initial discovery and, and assessment, understanding interdependencies, understanding how servers interact with each other, building out those costing scenarios to ensure that as you present this to the business, that you have confidence in the, the numbers and the, the information that's being presented and that you have a clear vision of how you're going to manage that process. These are all things that a partner like ProServe IT can help and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about. So this has been a relatively short session, um, a whole lot of information in a, in a short window. Um, if you'd like to understand a little bit more about the cloud assessment process, or you just want to talk deeper about your potential Azure migration journey, uh, you can reach out to us at cloud at I'd be happy to talk to you in more depth. Um, one of the things I will note is you will we'll see in the chat that there's actually a link to a, a full day Azure migration seminar. Um, so we're actually running one of these in late February, and I think another one in early March. Uh, it's basically an Azure migration in a day workshop. Um, there's a number of hands-on labs as well as we go into much greater depth on the overall process. Uh, but if Azure is in your near future or, or even your distant future, but you want to get a better handle on it, um, I do encourage you to take a look at, at that full day session if that's available to you. Um, if not, again, if you do have questions, feel free to reach out to us at cloud at prayersurveyt.com.
Um, if you've posted any questions in the chat, again, because this is a short, short session, we don't really have time to walk through that uh, in today's session. But if you do post questions in the chat, we will make sure to respond to those. Uh, we will be reaching back out to all the participants in the session in the next couple of days with answers to all those questions posed. Um, but like I said, if, if your question wasn't answered and you want a deeper dive, please feel free to reach out to us at cloud.prairiesurveyt.com. And I want to thank you for your time today. <laughs>